I'm here with Dr. Romano to do a video on alkenes. Hi, I'm Dr. Romano. I'm professor of organic chemistry here at Romano Scientific and the creator of the Orgo Man products and the author of the Dad Destroyer book. I'd like to go over some really solid problems today with you on the alkenes. The first question every student in the study group happened to get wrong. So pay attention and come around. The first part of this question is going to have three parts is which, pro, which gives a positive test when treated with bromine and CCL4? Well, the bromine and CCL4 is a test in which you would add a compound to a solution, and what we would do is look for a color change. And you would see the orange-brown color become colorless. It is a test for double or triple bonds between carbons. Well, there's no double or triple here between carbons, so this is wrong. The double bond is not between carbons, but between C and O, so that's wrong. Even though it looks like there's a double bond because there's resonance, um, benzene does not give a positive test. Now, this is the one that everyone went for if they saw a double bond. Now, if you remember in the mechanism of the reaction, we form the little bridged intermediate. In this case, since we're dealing with bromine, you would get a bromonium ion. However, this double bond is so electron poor. Look what's happening. You are having these groups all withdraw electron density. So that means that this is going to be so electron deficient, no reaction. So the answer would be none of these. None of these would give a positive test. That's a hard question. Number two, we're going, to commit, we're going to complete a sequence. First, we have NBS. All NBS will do is to take the H off of the benzylic position and put in a bromine. So I could have done it here or here. They're equivalent. So we would put the bromine in this position right here. Now, this is a secondary halide. Now, B and C. If you have a secondary halide, now this is a very, very strong base. Um, so you would treat this as if you were doing a reaction with a secondary halide, say with ethoxide or methoxide or something like that. And anytime you have a secondary with a strong base, you're gonna think E2. So as you can see, if you took off the H adjacent to the bromine, you would get this very, very conjugated system by the E2 mechanism. Competing against the E2 would be some SN2. So this would be the SN2. When I happened to do the experiment in my lab, 80% was E2 and 20% was the SN2 product. All right, let's do one more I wrote for you. Here's a really good problem I think you'll enjoy. What I want to do is to go from benzene and to make this as a target. But I want you to do it two ways. The first way, I'm going to do some aromatic chemistry. I'm going to first do a friedel craft The friedel craft reaction will put on an ethyl group. Now, I'm going to then use bromine and light. That's got, now, instead of bromine and light, I could have also used the NBS. And that's going to put the bromine one away from the benzene ring to substitute the benzylic hydrogen. Then I do an E2. There's my E2 product after I treat it with potassium T-butoxide. And then the final step, I use some good alkene chemistry. HBr and peroxide simply puts the bromine to the outside anti makovnikov Another way you could have done it, which I think is an even quicker way, you could have first halogenated it with bromine and the Lewis acid catalyst of iron 3 bromide, make a Grignard, treat it with the epoxide, acidify it, and that gives me the CH2CH2OH unit. And then I'm going to hit it with PBR3, that'll replace the OH with the PR, and that'll give me my target. All right, that should do it. Hopefully, you got some good understanding of some really solid chemistry on this. See you in study group. Bye-bye.